And we are live. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Gaming with Gears Planet with your host, Gears Planet. We're going to be playing some Tab G today, and yeah, let's see how well we do. So, welcome back to the channel. I hope everybody's having a wonderful Friday. And, well, if it is a Friday, well, I mean, okay, it's Friday, but, well, that's not promising. If it's Friday, but, say, for example, you are, um, you have an office job, then, uh, and the week is now over. Congratulations. Uh, party time. Yeah. That's nice. If not, uh, happy Friday, I suppose. Yeah. I'm doing all right. Mostly. Had a pretty hectic morning, which was mainly just me running around and doing errands. Picking up stuff for my parents and a couple of other things. I did actually do something pretty fun today. Um... I made soup, so I have long, I've always loved soup, and it's one of my all-time favorite dishes, and I honestly think it is the op, like, the ultimate, uh, f form of food that exists, for uh, numerous amounts of reasons, and I always love soup, and today, well, uh, my mom, uh, well, basically, since I'm done with school and my summer has officially started, I spend the day at home coding and playing video games and everything. And my mother uh, does not. She goes to work at a co-working space. She does online work, but yeah, still, she needs to be out of the house. So, uh, normally she comes home and then she cooks and everything. And today I offered, well, since, uh, yeah, since you're going to be out of the office, you're going to be at the office today. So she wasn't there yesterday because she had to, like, I think, organize some stuff at home, where I am right now. And I was like, well, since you're going to the office today, do you want me to make lunch? Because it, basically what happens, if if I make lunch, my she can stay there for like up to an extra hour, I think, which means she gets an extra hour of work done, which is very nice because it means, well, she can squeeze in, I think it's like five more hours into her uh, overall work week, which is like a full client's, a full, yeah, Enough for like half to like a full, uh, like job for one of her clients, which is very nice because, well, job, yes. So yeah, so she told me you can make some soup. Uh, what what she calls a kitchen sink soup, which is basically just okay. What miscellaneous veggies and other ingredients do we have? Throw them in a pot, throw in chicken broth, uh, and let simmer, or yes, cook. Which actually I will explain that more and introduce what is arguably my favorite cooking utensil slash tool of all time but i will get there so she was like yeah sure you can make some soup so i did my game like i did the errands i did my games and everything lunchtime rolled around and i was like okay i'll start making soup kind of panicked i didn't really know what i was doing luckily my dad came home helped me through the first couple of steps the rest of it was mostly chopping and so by the time she came home uh it was mostly just like a couple of final pointers and stuff like that and also, I today I learned that us uh, you need to be careful with certain or herbs because some of them, like I think it's laurel. Yeah, laurel. Uh, you do not need to put in that much, and I kind of put in a lot. Not too much, but it, like, yeah, it, like near the maximum. So that's good to know. Anyways, uh, I was introduced. And I got to use what is arguably my favorite tool in all of cooking ever. The Instapot. The Instapot, if you don't know what it is, it is a basically evolved pressure cooker. How a pressure cooker works is that it's a box, basically. It's a fancy box that uses pressure from steam to cook the things inside it. That's It's a rather simple concept. Uh, the air fryer, I think works on a similar in a similar fashion but it's a bit different both of them basically use very hot air to cook food however the instapot also has a number of other functions built into it these being like it has a control panel and when i say you can make pretty much anything with the instapot i mean it you can like you can make um let's see you can make soup that's one of the big ones you can make soup you can make broth you can make uh, you can saute stuff, uh, you can saute and grill stuff, not grill actually, just saute in like, s yeah, stuff. Um, you can make rice, you can make uh, risottos, you can make um, like, 
I'm not sure what else, but it is. it has like 27 different functions, and those are just the buttons. You can actually use it for like two to three times the listed uh, uses it has. It like unironically has 50 different things you can use it for, and when I say it's like... Uh, okay, hold on. I am going to pretend... Okay, we're going to wait 15 seconds because I... Normally I would play it out, but I'm honestly kind of looking uh, for a bit more action. <laughs> because the 10-player game is really, really dull. Like, and I say really dull, I mean, like, it's absolutely terrible. There we go, 22. Ah, that's nice. So, yeah, when I say the Instapot can do in anything, I mean it. Like, it, it literally is used in like 50% of all the all of the food that uh, my family prepares it's insane not 50 that's a bit of okay 35% more or less and then because the mainly most of the other stuff is stuff that you can't really do in the uh, pressure and the instapot which is stuff like barbecue or uh, stuff using the air fryer and all that stuff you can't really do that but uh, out of like conventional food like a, a very very large amount of it is done in the instapot it is such a nice tool and the best part is it is incredibly low maintenance when i mean low maintenance i mean you put in the ingredients you close the lid you set the steam valve to closed you press the buttons and you wait that's it once it goes beep you go over you release the pressure valve and you wait you let it sit for like a couple of minutes and then you ladle it out and you eat whatever you have it's that easy to use it's amazing Yes, I'm sl yes, I'm slivitating. Yes, whilst thinking about it, ah, I'm kidding. But no, it is arguably one of the. Mm, how do I put the? How do I say this? Yeah, it's arguably the best and most useful kitchen appliance that uh, I own. Me and my family own. So, anyways, yeah, uh, I made the soup. It wasn't much actually. It was a veggie soup. So it was sweet potatoes, garbanzo beans. A bit of peas, although not many because I did not realize how many you actually need. Um, what else did I put in? Sweet potatoes, uh, celery, a bit of celery, and a tiny bit of carrot. Uh, a couple of spices, uh, some salt, and then some chicken broth. And overall, it was actually a very good soup. It was a bit watery because I didn't realize how much uh, vegetables you actually need to counteract the uh, broth. Which is on me, I've never actually made this soup before. This is my first time, like, making a soup completely independently. So, and you learn. But overall, it was very, very good. Uh, I'd give it, like, a 7.5 out of 10. Mainly because I, when I ate it, it was a bit hot, so I couldn't really taste, like... Not that I couldn't taste the flavor, but it was very odd. Right, actually, hold on, I'm gonna grab the AK-74 as you. Mainly because it's got a bit more punch at range than the, um, it's got, basically, the, uh, 74U has more punch at range than the, uh, MP5K, and it also has better ammo economy, which basically means it shoots slower and does a bit more damage per each bullet, which means each ammo, like, is more important, it has more, like, value to it, which is important when you've got limited ammunition, as you tend to do, when you first land. Anyways, that is enough blabbing on my end. Um, yes, so... Overall, very good soup. It was very interesting, though, because the flavors kept changing. Hold on. I missed. Now I didn't. You know, he picked up the pistol, he could have absolutely two-shot headshot me, but, uh, didn't. Excuse me. Um, anyways, yeah, so, overall, good soup. It, it is very interesting, though, as I was eating it, because it kept switching between flavors. Like, for one moment, you get the sweet, pea, like, sweet potato flavor, and another one, you would get the, uh, like, garbanzo bean flavor, and another one, you would get, like, the, uh, like, a different flavor. Very odd, but, yeah, that was nice. Anyways, what other fun stuff can I talk about? Well, this game, I suppose. Um, you're landing, well, we've landed city, mainly just because it's a very reliable, I suppose. 
it's risky. Okay, it's it's a seemingly risky drop with a lot of loot. Thing is, with city, there isn't actually that much risk, merely because there's a lot of miscellaneous junk. And I mean, like, when I say junk, I mean, like, pipes and trees and water, like, uh, fire escapes and all of that stuff. Which make it so that if you get ambushed, you can probably either, like, get away or, like, not take a huge chunk of damage immediately. Which is... Okay, let's see. I don't know what they just shot at me with. Concerned, because if it's a sniper rifle, I'm kind of boned. Oh. Okay, they got some kind of slow firing weapon. Um. Oh, I think it's the MP44. Which would make sense why they don't want to take this fight, because they I'm guessing they don't have a close range weapon. Or if they do, it's not very good. Oh boy. Yeah. Let me guess. MP44 and yeah. Poison. Yeah, I was right, they didn't have any close range guns, so they didn't want to take that fight. That almost ended actually very badly. Yeah. Mainly because they managed to get a headshot off of. If you're ever fighting somebody using those uh, high weapons like the BAR or the um, the BAR or the uh, MP44 or stuff like that, which have slow fire rate, like slow fire rate, they're like a bit uh, more unwieldy. Unwieldy basically means they've got like slow fire rate or they've got slow like slow fire rates, not great reload speeds, stuff like that. They like maybe bounce a bit. They're like slow moving. Overall, they feel like a bit clunky. Uh, be careful because usually those damage, like the fact that they are clunky is because they've got incredibly high damage values that go with them. And in the case, that's absolutely true in the case of the uh, MP44. I think it does like, um, like 70, 80 on headshot. I'm not sure exactly of the exact numbers. It's a, it's a, it's more than 60, which is, uh, yeah. I don't remember the exact numbers, but I'm pretty sure if you land headshot, body shot, just like the BAR, it will uh, kill the enemy. And admittedly, I did have an extra six health, so that could have been useful, but they had a poison, which kind of negated the bonus health. But yeah, anyways, in those kinds of fights against those kinds of weapons, I play safe, don't play risky. When I play safe, I mean like peek out and hit them for like two, three bullets and then go back into cover and then peek out and like, for example, I'll demonstrate this rock here. So let's say there's somebody standing over there. Playing risky would be running over here and then trying to gun them down. Playing safe would be shooting them and looking at the cover and coming over here and shooting them. And then me running up top. Okay, so, or like trying to get on top of the boulder and then shooting them and etc. Whereas playing risky would be, yeah, just running at them. Hold on. Um, um, sorry. Okay, I got some frames back. I had Firefox open, which normally isn't a problem. Yeah, I would like my frame rate back, so I'll have to sacrifice it. If you're curious what I had open, it was a mashup album called The Spooky Album. I don't remember, I think it was by the channel I Make Content. It's a very, very good mashup album. It's a lot of like Halloween themed songs and uh, stitched together and like very, very, overall very fun. One of my uh, favorite uh, seasonal, Oops. somebody just died right here. Loot never spawns like that, which means somebody's close. But they're either they either shot them and ran, or they haven't. Uh, yeah. They either shot them and ran, or oh, found them. Found them and missed, which isn't great. Let's go uh, fishing, as I call it. Hmm. Oh, they're they're getting to zone. Clever. Actually, yeah, I should probably do that too. <laughs> Now I think about it. That's big ammo. I'll take the small ammo and I will take the. There is not. I'll take the 2x scope. It might prove useful. Anyways, how far do I have to go? Not far at all. Okay, we can uh, stop by industry. That'll be nice. Yeah, a large part of this game 
is um, a lot is contextual clues. So like, for example, things like um, players instinctually, it's, it's like pure habit. Like I'm a loot goblin, I grab everything I can much to my detriment. Yes, but it happens. So I will grab ammo, uh, bandages. Even if I have like a thousand ammo, I will like instinctively try and... Oh boy, that's not good. Wait a minute. Whoa, whoa. Okay, that's a gospel user down. That's nice. I know somebody in fact will have heard me, so we're gonna throw a smoke grenade and we're gonna go loot. Okay, yes, 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 absolutely. Um, oh, I'm guessing they ran out of bolt ammo. That would make sense. I got a huge burst of healing there, though. That's odd. I got like 50 health back from some random thing. I don't know. It happens. Like, I've noticed this. It's a very odd. I don't know if it's some kind of secret game mechanic, but like, I will get shot and then I will suddenly get 20 health back for no reason, but it suddenly just like springs back onto my health bar. I don't know. Perhaps it's a lag issue. Like, the game notices I've been shot. Like, the enemy says I've been shot and the game is like, no, they weren't there, and so it refunds the health. I, I don't know. It's very odd. Yeah. However, I did learn something very important today, which is the fact that um, gospel bolts bounce off of the uh, shield blessings, which actually makes them incredibly a lot stronger than they already are. Because it basically... Whoa. That's each one with a fire rate barrel. Okay, we're going to throw that, and then we're going to run over here. I don't really need that smoke grenade. What it does is that it well, it's a distraction, but also lets me run this way. Because if the person gets out of the tower and drops down, they can't see through a smoke to me because I'm running in the open here, which is mainly just to A, get to zone and be in front of this person. Actually, okay, what kind of zone is this? Ooh, if we can, if we could get over to long wall, we'd have the like prime power position. But I also really want to get this enemy, the one who's been shadowing me out of the game oh and there's a fight going down at power okay oh wait that's a machine that's an that's an m2 okay. Okay. we'll throw over some things no so i meant shoot the enemies i meant hit them like deal damage and kill them Okay, so we got somebody behind us. Yep, in the tower there. I think I've put myself in an incredibly bad position here. I'm gonna solve this by throwing an orbital strike grenade. <laughs> it's a terrible idea, honestly. But, okay, also, fire grenade so we can get this person out of this tower. Nice. Oh, wait, there's somebody left? There are two people in there. Oh, wait, that's wonderful. Okay, hold on. Who survived the uh, blast over here? It's my real question. Okay, first off. Yes, 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 yes. I saw launch fire grenade. Give me that. Ammo. Yes. Fire rate barrel. Yes, yes. Storm. We don't care about you. Storm call. No. Health analyzer. I think that might have been the person who was shooting at me. Because they had an H1, and the H1 is not super common. Um, let's see. Oh, that's not good. That is the sound of a musket weapon. I can survive it, especially if I can get one more kill. If I get one more kill, I will be above the uh, minimum threshold for a non, non musket, non blunderbuss weapons, because the musket does 130. So if I can get to 136, I will be fine. Okay, so we know we've got one person right there. We can, yeah, we see them running. Where's the other person? The person with the musket. Oh, they... Oh, they were right here! Oh, they were fighting each other! Oh. They're hurt. They're at 46 health. Also... This is bad. Bad, 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 bad. Okay. Let's reorganize our inventory a bit. Um, implosion plus splinters, actually. I'm gonna take implosion plus that. We're gonna keep on the splinter grenades if... It... If, it, if we end up in these buildings, it's going to be useful for there. Let me play this carefully. Actually, wait, I have a smoke grenade. 
And also the other enemy is a lot closer than I thought. Oh boy, that's not good. Um, I think they're behind me? Wait, they are? What? How did you get there? That's gonna hit them. Oh no, they've got some kind of super healing loadout. And also bonus max health. Oh god, this is gonna be messy. Ah, he's the last guy alive. Oh, it didn't reload, that's bad. Okay, we're gonna take a break here. Okay. We need to land a flintlock headshot on this person. Or like a, a, a direct impact grenade. Ah! They tried. Wait, it's a no storm grenade. Perfect. No, no, they got away. Damn it. Oh, oh my god, we did it. Oh, yes. Oh boy. Oh, that was an epic win. Oh, I thought I was doomed there. I didn't think they were going to run. I thought they were just going to keep reloading and shooting. <sighs> yeah, I did not play that well. What I should have done is... um, The main thing, the main problem is that I missed my snowstorm grenade. I meant to throw it over the rock to hit them on point. Because if I had managed to hit them on point, I could have lined up a flintlock shot, which deals 90 plus damage. And then I could have just gunned them down with the uh, submachine gun or rifle. Problem is, I missed. I still managed to get them, but I also got caught. So by the time I managed to catch up to them, they had already run around the house. And so then it was basically just back and forth shooting, and they decided to back away. I think they I think they got concerned um, that they were low health, so they started to back out. And then I, it was just a matter of, uh, so what, like, I ran out of ammo, ammo in my submachine gun, so I just swapped it with a rifle, and I think I got, like, a lucky headshot or something. So, oh, boy. <laughs> Ah, <sighs> wow, that was intense. Ah, oh, jeez. Actually, uh, hold on. I'm actually I'm going to be right back. I need more water, so minor pause. You won't notice it, but already I am back and I am refreshed. Let's get to game two. Yeah. Oh, that was surely was a an exciting ending. Ah, uh, so the main thing there, the main takeaway from that end game right there. Because I know a lot of people, I, for example, was one of these people, but I've also seen it, like, just people talking about it, is that a lot of people struggle with the end game, and it makes sense, because the end game is an incredibly difficult part of the time. Most of the time, if something wrong happens, you can either, like, escape, or um, you have a lot more leeway, I suppose. Because if, let's say, there's the middle of the match, and there's an opponent over there, and I, I can just fight them and everything, and if they get too low health, they can just back off. If I get too low health, I can just hide, among, hide amongst the containers, and that's it. But the thing with the zone, and with endgame, is that you're in, a very, you're in a very confined zone, so suddenly, if an enemy, like, let's say that's the um, edge of zone, if an enemy is here, and I'm here, we don't really have that much room, actually. We've got a couple containers, but if they've got a bit of experience, they'll know which containers are open or not. And if they manage to hit me for like 70, 80% of my health, I don't really have much, many places to take cover. Actually, well, that's a lie. This is a terrible example or terrible location for this example, this example, because if you know what you're doing, you can absolutely lose somebody chasing you whilst you're in containers, like for right here. Actually, can I squeeze into this? Can you? I think you can. Maybe not. But there are a couple of places where you can just, like, shimmy your... Oh, yeah, no, you can shimmy your way through here. And if you, like, jump down here and start going over here, like, what's the time? If you jump from here, people are going to assume you're going that way. But if you suddenly stop and then you just start... Hold on. You start shimming this way. Like, I don't know... Yeah, you just do that. Boom. We suddenly gone here around them and perhaps behind the enemy without them even realizing. So that's okay, off the point. Anyways, 
the main takeaway from last game was what do I need to do to um, counteract my enemy's life? loadout, I suppose. And that was the main thing. I saw that the enemy was able to heal. It was two parts. I saw that, A, they had a lot of green blessings. Green blessings, like, when I say green blessings, I mean the little icon above their heads. It's based on color, and most of the time, you, like, even if you can't see what the direct, what it actually is, you can guess based on the color. Most of the time, green means health, sla like, healing slash max health blessings. Red is some kind of combat blessing. And then, um... Yeah, and then yellow's utility slash speed. So, I'm pretty certain that's how it works. So, I saw they had a lot of green blessings. And most of the time, that's usually means that, yeah, they'll be either be a bit tanky or they'll have good health regeneration. But I, when I started shooting them with the scar, I managed to hit them for like several times. Actually, it was mainly because I landed an implosion grenade and then I just shot them. And I, like immediately, I had the health analyzer, which is why the health analyzer is the best underbarrel attachment for uh, like non submachine gun weapons. I saw that they had 162% max health, which means they had like at minimum a blue, um, whatchamacallit, they had at minimum a blue uh, max health up, most likely one higher. And I also saw the heal particles, which means they were, uh, their entire loadout was built around having a high, whatchamacallit. Basically, their entire loadout was, I'm very hard to kill. That's not great, because most of the time, even if, if their loadout is, I'm very hard to kill, because this game isn't a hero shooter or anything like that, like, let's say, for example, Overwatch, most of the time, those I'm very hard to kill uh, enemies are usually uh, tanks, so they're either rather slow, or their ranged, it, like, ranged options aren't super great. They still have good range, but it's like... They don't have, like, sniper rifle. And most of the time, they're, like, uh, straight. They're, like, flat out um, damage is, like, less than what you would call a quote-unquote damage hero. But in this game, you can absolutely use, like, uh, like a minigun, like, a minigun, a Barrett, and then be, like, nearly unkillable or be, at, like, incredibly fast. Which makes both of those incredibly dangerous and very threatening to well your well-being. So, what I did was I adapted, and I basically came to the conclusion there were two ways I was going to kill the enemy. Number one, a very high amount of burst damage. I had the tools for that, which was the flintlock pistol. However, I need to line up the shot. So, what I need to do was land some kind of grenade. So, either a snowstorm grenade, an implosion, or a knockback grenade. Something, basically, a grenade that stuns the enemy and prevents them from, like, moving around. Because then that gives you the time to line up a headshot. You can semi-reliably... That's not good. It is admittedly possible to semi-reliably land a whatchamacallit. Oh, the medkits. Oh, wait, no, I'm my inventory's full, I forgot. Oh, we are not going to need big ammo. Well, let's go investigate. It's a car. Gunshots in a car, that either means the person is driving through and eliminates somebody on the way. Oh, yeah. Oh, enemy spotted. Let's go. So, yeah. The main trick was I needed to wait, find a way to, like, get an opportunity to make myself an opportunity to shoot the enemy, which is what I eventually ended up doing by a complete accident, honestly. What I meant to do was throw a snowstorm and then flintlock them. I missed the snowstorm grenade. So then it was mainly just a matter that they were point blank so I could shoot them. And then they decide to back off when they were low health, which was actually a terrible idea. They should not have done that. They should have just kept shooting. But, meh. And then I, and then I just shot them. I don't think this enemy here knows about us, which means you can sneak up and crossbow, start the fight with a crossbow pistol. And then swap over to a rifle. They've got some kind of pistol. There you go. Yeah, crossbow pistol is very strong. If you can land your shot, it does like 90 something damage. It, it kind of it falls. In, it's like it's the counterpart to the flintlock. The flintlock is more reliable because the projectile goes faster. The reload, I believe, is faster. And also, I think flintlock weapons are a bit more common. But uh, I'm not sure.
Also, I think this one has a lot more like a uh, hip fire sway compared to the, uh, the flintlock, but you never know. Anyways. Yeah. And so then afterwards, it was just a matter of shooting. So yeah, that was last game, but now we've got this game. Oh, enemy nearby. We're gonna use the dash to get over here to get into a direct solid cover and also so we can take the height advantage here. So we're gonna be on equal footing. Okay. They're taking their time to aim, which means they've most likely got some kind of dangerous weapon. Probably a kind of sniper. I'm going to be honest, that was a completely accidental dash, but it benefits us, so. Dash is a very, very strong ability to have. It's arguably one of the best. Um, what do you call it? One of the best blessings in the game, and simply because it offers you, like, a an amount of mobility that you can't ever get in the game. In other games, you have things like slides, which usually offer you like a large. What the? That's a spell. That's a, that's a summon rock spell. That's not good. People who use summon who use summon rock spells are either a brand new or know what they're doing, and I think this is the latter, which is incredibly hazardous to my health in the game and in real life because it causes stress. Yeah, they're they're going rock fishing. What? And it's almost working. Well, minus the fact that they're overshooting by like 50 meters. But I applaud their effort. Whoa! Yeah, and that's the enemy from behind us who caught up. I'm gonna fire back, but I actually don't want to kill them out here, because I, I okay. You wanna? I'm gonna throw down a launch pack grenade, because otherwise we're never getting to zone, or if we do, we're gonna be held by the other guy. So, um, we'll crash land here on the edge of facility, or not facility. I forget what it's called. Factor, I think. Yeah. Okay. Somebody in a car. We don't need. To... Doing okay ammo wise. It's. Like, it's, it's, it's a moderate amount of ammo. If we end up in an extremely extended fight, we'll start suffering, but for any normal routine engagement, we should be good. So we've got two people here. We've got one person above us with some kind of uh, crossbow weapon. The second person who is now fighting them. Or it might be a third. We've got a car nearby. Okay, so we've got two people fighting down low and then person fighting up here. One of them just died. We heard the little soul appearing sound. Also, there's a healing grenade. Oh, this nade fishing. I I couldn't get to them in time. They've got a lot of blessings. I right, gun, please. Oh, it's in single fire. Oh, that's terrible. When did I hit V? What? No matter. We're, We're back in house. And oh, yeah. Then that would be the other person who is. Okay. I don't know what kind of machine gun they have. It doesn't. S okay. We got a problem. If it's the uh, 80 MG82, we're okay. That gun is incredibly unreliable. And most of the time. It's a niche weapon, it's not great. If it's the Browning, we are at a lot more of an issue because the Browning is actually really strong. Most people don't use the Browning because the recoil is very severe. And it also seems like a meme, like why would you use a 500 round machine gun? Because it's got 500 rounds and it's got like not bad damage stats. It's like a less, it's like a less intense uh, mini gun. Okay. Oh no, I heard a crossbow bolt, that wasn't me. And that would be the other dude. I'm gonna try and bait him out so I can land the grenade. But he's coming up, I think. Also, am I in the one I am? Just barely. Okay. Let's get out of here. The longer we stay, the more hazardous to my health it is. Yep, that would be why. Nade fishing, and. Oh. We hit him, but. Shield grenade, clever. Drat. Wait, 
Do fire grenades work on shield bubbles? I wonder. They do! He's hurt. He's incredibly hurt. Nice. Okay. Damn it, damn it, damn it. I thought I had wall grenade up. That's mainly a distraction. We actually wanted to go in the house, but... Okay. Grenades. Uh, speed. I want the speed. Ah, no! <sighs> That's terrible. Actually, it's not. Can I still access the loot from here? Yes, I can. Some of it. Okay, that's bad. Also terrible because I'm no longer in zone. Um. Yeah, fun trick. You can actually get yourself over the walls with a uh, launch pack grenade, which is a very good thing to know. Okay, we'll use a bandage as soon as we land so we can get up and get back our health. Weapon mastery, no. Okay, hold on. Let's get in this house. Let's get over here so hopefully nobody shoots us. And nope, we need to get the zone. Oh boy. One. Where is it? There? Uh, this is going to be awkward. Okay. I need to reorganize my inventory and I need to re-equip my thing. Okay. Uh, smoke grenades and we're going to want a stall grenade. So you. No, 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 no. Game just ate my splinter grenades. If I will say something I do, one thing I find annoying is how fast the walls move. And also how they just, oh uh, no. Okay. Throw that out and we'll use that to cover to move up to the rock line there. Also because I don't want to deal with that other guy. So we can take this head fight head on. Two, four. Okay. No. Oh wait, it's the last person. There's one guy left? What? Already? It's not good. Killing grenade, because I don't know if I got time to use this mech kit also. God damn it. Honestly, I didn't really have a point to throw that, but if it hits the other dude and it locks him in and it like, he dies his own grenade, that would be incredibly funny. Nope, we're good. Okay, so we know he's that end of the force, because Ah, he got me. Well done. That's two shots. He's about half health, I'm guessing. Oh no, it's the it's the rock guy. It's the one who's been pestering me with the su summon rock spell the entire game. And I'm out of damage grenades. Well, this is terrible news. He is lucky me. A terrible shot. As am I, quite frankly, but all that matters is that I need to be a better shot than him. Oh, we've hit him. And that's game. <sighs> yes! The second ever back-to-back -back victory. <sighs> oh, boy. Wow. UMP, honestly. <sighs> okay. Takeaways from that last fight. Um, let me think. Staying on the move, mostly. That was a key thing. I knew that he had um, some kind of rifle. And I, so he, I knew he had some kind of rifle. He had the H1. And I didn't know what his third slot was. So I mostly, um, yeah. So we dodged the orbital strike. Um, or I died. I dodged the orbital strike. I came back and I started shooting. I got hit by the implosion grenade, which wasn't great necessarily, but um, he was too far away, so he couldn't actually profit on that. What it did do, however, is it had him move forward so I could throw down the snowstorm grenade. Snowstorm grenade didn't really do much, but I did manage to land two hits on him. And then afterwards, it was more so back and forth. I got to cover, he started shooting me and everything. And honestly, uh, I, I was gambling there with the crossbow shot. I was mostly just trying to see, because if I landed great, that's what happened is I, it's a large burst of damage, which very quickly uh sw like swings the uh, uh like yeah it very quickly shifts the tide of the fight into being in my favor which is how we managed to get that win but if i had missed then i probably would have just uh gone back to shooting him with the ak and as long as we managed to shoot him more than he could shoot us then that's all that mattered 
Because the main thing that I noticed is that he was he had rather unreliable aim. Um, when we were shooting there in that middle section, I managed to get like two shots off. I think it was like a leg and a foot shot, but he managed to land absolutely zero. And most of the bolts whiffed over my head. They didn't go to my sides. They went like way far, which means his like like target accuracy was rather low. So I knew I could safely or like semi-reliably just keep shooting at him and like take a direct 50-50 fight because I had the advantage accuracy wise. <sighs> Anyways, wow, that was fun. Hectic, yeah. <laughs> Thank you all for watching. I'll see you all tomorrow with uh, probably some Hawked. You know, I've been having a great time recently with the game. Even though, like, I've finished all of the uh, current storyline, I still enjoy playing it, and it is still very fun. Just go in there and everything. I might also... I might, I might try doing a pistol-only challenge tomorrow, which would be Auto Attack and Dark Spark. Which sounds insane, I know, but hear me out because I think it's actually like better than most of the <laughs> mostly Quoco meta loadouts in the game. So if you want to see that, tune in tomorrow. Anyways, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all tomorrow. Ciao.